Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are on the last two episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender, the Netflix live action. From the title of episode 7, The North, I am assuming they are reaching the Northern Water Tribe. I also know who plays Yue. When the cast list hit online, I saw that Amber Midthunder would be playing Yue, and I was interested. I've seen her in Prey, and I really enjoyed her performance in that movie, so I'm looking forward to see how she performs in Avatar. Considering that this is where Katara will advance her waterbending. I'm interested to see how the waterbending will look. I mentioned in the last video that the waterbending looked kind of off, <laughs> but Katara was barely in those episodes, so now that she'll probably be the focus in these ones, it'll look a lot better. And I can't wait to see how they portray Yue and Sokka's romance together. Without further ado, let's get started on Avatar The Last Airbender. This is episode 7. I overheard them discussing new orders, orders from the Fire Lord himself. He sent his personal guard to bring Prince Zuko back to Capital City where he has to stand trial for treason. <laughs> reason. When did they find out that that was Zuko? That the mercenary was Zuko? This is Zhao's doing. Somehow he's convinced Ozai you've turned against him. Was it? Was it Zhao or was it Azula? You need to leave. Now. Isn't him running away doesn't that look bad for him? When he's supposed to stand trial, but he's like nowhere to be found? That looks bad. She had no idea. It was all too easy to get him to take the bait. Zhao's being a little tricky. Okay, props. That fucking got me. I took it seriously. What will you tell the Fire Lord about his son? That the prince chose to put his needs- Oh! <gasps> Is that boat gonna explode? Is that like oil or exploding jelly? <gasps> it is. Oh shit. Get out! Zuko's on his own. He wasn't anything like I thought he'd be. He just seems so alone. I'm shocked. Aang made a connection with him. Right? Ooh, Katara's a little too understanding. Remember, Zuko fired a fucking fireball at you, made you relive the trauma of your mom dying, and he invaded your tribe. Don't forget that! Don't forget that! It's the Northern Water Tribe! Mm, not gonna lie, that kind of looks like styrofoam. Oh, wow, this is like a whole ass city. I mean, that looked good. Aside from the front, the actual city itself looks good. And this is my daughter, Princess Yue, our tribe's- There she is. Oh yeah, so I got spoiled by what Yue looked like. And I gotta say, that wig is not it. That wig is not it. It's like cosplay wig. It's fine for cosplay, but not for like a filmed production. Stop staring. Oh, can't help it. There's something about her. Have we? Yeah, like she's pretty. Well, at least she's staring back. So it's not creepy on Sokka's part. Our enemies can't be allowed to get away with such a, a brazen crime. <laughs> I know who did this. It was Ozai. Ozai's lost. <laughs> Zhao's like, damn, he fell for it, actually. I see. <laughs> The eyes wandering all over the place. The Fire Lord has given me the honor given me. of leading a great armada with orders to conquer the North. I admit that I have little experience in battle. That also means that I have no track record of failure. Unlike you. Rude. But also, I don't know if that makes it any better. Like, no experience. Yeah, well, no duh, you have no record of failure. But what if this is your first failure? And it's a big one. It'd be a big failure, too. The Fire Lord deems your performance below average. You should have finished him at least two moves earlier. Two moves earlier? That's fucking annoying. Like, this ain't fucking... I do not know why the first game example I thought of was Solitaire. I'll burn everyone in the world until he admits the truth. That I'm the one. You really... You really think your dad's gonna admit that? Yeah, I guess, yeah, she's a teenager, so she's craving her dad's approval, but like, you know how he is. She's just a girl. She's a princess and a spiritual leader. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, she's not just a girl. She's a princess. Also, Katara, do you really think that you have faith in him to pull a princess? Katara, I just wanna say thanks for helping me get here. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. A world I wouldn't have seen if it wasn't for you. So Aww. that was a little moment together. You said you were entirely self-taught. I feel like I've come pretty far, but I still have so much to learn. That's why. I or are they gonna keep the storyline of like they only teach men? The Fire Nation's attacks took so much from you, from all of us. Dude, I can't 
with his bald cap. It's not completely flat on his head. Like, it's so raised. I feel like you can see the edge, which is like on his forehead. Tomorrow morning, go and find Yagoda. She is one of our finest instructors. Oh, okay. Oh, so they just took that completely out. Okay, maybe Katara has a point, Sokka. You need to stop staring. How about some cloud berries? Ooh, ice cream. Thank you. Can help me finish this. <laughs> Come on, it's pretty good. Yeah, she's definitely interested in him. If she reached out and talked to him from across the room, they weren't even face to face. He was across the room. He's already in there. When I was a kid, I used to hide out here when my dad would meet with the elders, with the grand, and make dessert. Sounds fun. You are just a girl. I know out there. I seen all. That's what they expect me to be. Okay. We have the message of like, oh, that's what they expected me to be. So many expectations. Zuko, Aang, Yue. There are times it would have been nice to not have to worry. Times I wish I could be just a boy. Ooh. How do I know you? Princess Yue. They're ready for the evening blessing. Oh, is that her fiance? Damn, I see that the tribes have the same accessories. Oh, that's what was on the fox's tail? Okay, no wonder the fox's voice sound familiar because I literally have heard her voice before. Fire Nation armor, is it metal? Uh, no metal, leather, and- Yeah, uh, yeah, why would they wear metal uniforms? They would get hot. They would burn themselves. <laughs> okay, so I mentioned this in my first video, in the first two episodes. I cut it out because I was like, eh, time, and like, I don't think this comment even matters, but I'll bring it up now. Whenever they're like in, an icy area like the Southern Water Tribe and now in the Northern Water Tribe, the lighting that they use just doesn't match with their environment. The light on them is a little too warm in such a cool toned environment. It makes the setting look fake. Truth is, I haven't mastered any other bending. But we've heard stories of how you've saved communities. How were you able to do all that? My friends helped me. It would have been wise to have focused on your training during your journey. Well, who's supposed to teach him? He got no one to teach him. That's why they're there. Water allows life to flourish and to heal. Ooh, that looked cool. Oh, are they only relegating her to healing? So maybe they are keeping the whole like sexism thing. Feel the flow of energy through the body. Connect that flow to the energy. Oh, that's kind of cool. Having like little practice dummies where it shows like the energy flow. That's cool, I like that. When do we get to fight training? I'm sorry, but women don't fight. Oh, I fucking it. In the Northern Water Tribe, women aren't allowed to fight. Aren't allowed? That's not right. But that is our way. Yeah, that's fucking annoying. Like, she came all the way up here to train, and they won't even let her. Princess Yue, she seems great. She's dedicated, kind, generous. She represents the highest ideals of our tribe. She is the best of us. Aw, that's nice. You like her. Yeah, kind of obvious. We were betrothed. It was arranged by our parents when we were children, but when she turned 16, she broke it off. Damn. You're betrothed and you liked her? And then she was the one that broke it off? That sucks, dude. But it's okay. During his time as the Avatar, Kirk didn't engage much with the world. Some say he became enamored with the spirit world and spent most of his time there. Unfortunately, that meant he wasn't around much to help us deal with our problems. Oh. So he didn't do his job as the Avatar, let everyone down. <laughs> Ooh, Aang. Don't take it to heart. Don't take it to heart. You met Kyoshi and Roku. They didn't let people down. I mean, I'm sure Roku did. But Kyoshi was standing on business, so. Okay, in my first video, I was like, huh, there was such a big emphasis on Kyoshi. Where did Roku go? Because Roku was like the one that gave Aang most of the information. But now that I've gone through most of the episodes, I see what they're doing. They're giving attention to different past avatars, which I actually like better because Although Roku is cool, it seemed odd that he was the main avatar that Aang communicated with. But with the live action, I like how he is going to different avatars for advice. Obviously, each one has their own experiences, so they have like their own set of advice to give to him. The avatar state, to gain control over it, you need to first master the other disciplines. And despite all my sacrifices, I still couldn't save the one that mattered the most. Oh, the love of his life. A predatory spirit came to seek vengeance on me. Ko. Umi, my beloved. Got her face stolen. Ugh, I hate the squelching sound. The avatar must walk alone, or else the ones you love will suffer. <sighs> Damn. Imagine hearing that as a 12 year old. Is something wrong? I'm just a little tired. I guess you need to go recombobulate. Does she recognize him? But how? 
I like this outfit of hers. Northern Water Tribe Slay. Not long after I was born, I got very sick. So my father pleaded with the spirits to save my life. The moon spirit answered his prayer and imbued me with some of its essence and restored my life. That's the night my hair changed color. Oh, they just had to throw in that information about her hair color. I wish they could have did like a cutscene of that whole thing, especially like her hair color turning color. I feel like they're rushing this so fast right now. It also means I have the ability to visit the spirit world. You didn't like it? Nearly being mauled by a spirit monster or having to relive one of the most painful memories of my life. Painful? I was nothing. Don't do that. Don't make it less than what it is. Okay, emotionally intelligent queen. She met him in the spirit world and was like, I like him. And then cut off her, en her engagement. That's crazy. I mean, she doesn't have to marry someone that she doesn't want to, but still like, <laughs> Like Sokka's the reason? Why did you turn down Han? He is everything that a girl could want. But I'm not just a girl. But he is not the boy of my dream. Oh. Sokka is? Wait, this is going so fast. They just met. They had one moment in the kitchen where she made ice cream. Ah, fucking ice cream just solves everything. <laughs> a bear. Uh, actually it's a- Bro, these two were fucking flirting while Aang was getting the worst advice of his life. Women aren't allowed in combat. It's stupid and it's wrong. I've been fighting firebenders ever since I left home. Can any of your men say that? That doesn't matter. Why not? Because this isn't about them, it's about you. You're not strong enough. <gasps> Women aren't strong enough. You haven't been training and preparing to lay down your life for everyone here. But she literally has the experience. And I'm not going to let what happened to the Southern Tribe happen here. Does he think that all the waterbenders in the southern tribe died because of women? Maybe we should talk to Yue. Or maybe- Maybe we should listen to them. <gasps> Aang! Oh, that comes off so wrong to Katara. Right after that conversation. I can't lose you in Sokka. You're not gonna lose us. But just the thought I could is gonna hold me back. These people need the Avatar. And I can't be the Avatar with you around. That's so hurtful, Aang. I get what he's trying to do. He tries to close himself off, but that's not the way, that's not the way. Also, I saw some of that Katara spirit in her when she was arguing with Paku. Okay? Okay, Katara. Love the energy. Keep it up. I wonder what they'll call me when the news reaches Capital City. I quite like Zhao the Conqueror. Should have some flair. A conqueror? What makes you think you can succeed when so many others have failed? Because I have something none of the others had. I have destiny on my side. <laughs> no way he just said that. Wow. Oh, right. You deserve to be brought down just for that line alone. I have personally made arrangements to ensure our victory. What is that? This. What is that? This is destiny. <laughs> Stop. Stop with the destiny. There may be more, but he's keeping it to himself. Nice. So anticlimactic. But we all knew Zuko wasn't gonna die. Even if someone who hadn't even seen the anime series watched this, obviously they're gonna know he didn't die. Have you got a plan yet? The plan is to reclaim what's rightfully mine. So no plan. <laughs> I'm working on it, uncle. <laughs> He's so cute. I really warmed up to Dallas Lu's portrayal of Zuko. He really feels like a teenager. Like how Zuko actually is. He's supposed to be 16. Choose your opponent. No. Azula, stop playing games. I'm the one playing games. This is your last chance. Fight or fail. Is she gonna do it? No. Oh. You dare. What? You gonna burn me like you burn Zuko? If she said that shit, that'd be so funny. Hmm. You know how like electricity bending? To be able to do it, you have to be like cold, calculated, and emotionless. Azula isn't emotionless. I'm gonna challenge Paku to fight. I know he's probably gonna mop the floor with me, but it doesn't matter. All my life I've held myself back. I'm not just gonna let someone else do it to me now. Great, I like the, I'm liking the energy. Remember back at the Southern Air Temple when you said we had to go with Aang? If we hadn't gone with him, I wouldn't have seen how two kids from the Southern Water Tribe can measure up to anyone. What I'm trying to tell you is go kick his ass. Okay. Aw, cute little moment between Sokka and Katara. A little sibling love. Go back to the healing huts with the other women. It's the way that he didn't even get wet. When did Katara learn how to do like hand-to-hand -hand combat as opposed to like water bending attacks? Maybe she learned it from watching Sokka and Aang, but... <laughs> Bro, that looked so fake. That looked so bad. They really CGI'd her hair loose. I can't. Is that all you got? Okay. All right. Yeah, kick his ass, Katara. <laughs> Why'd that look funny? <laughs> Please. Why is this fight like unintentionally funny? <laughs> the reflection on the eyes.
Well, that can't be the end of the fight, girl. Play dirty. Get him while he... Get him right now. That was incredible. Those ice discs. How did you do that? <laughs> oh, wow. He's shaking. Let me know. Well, I doubt anyone's going to say you're not strong enough now. I'll just say I lost. Did you? <gasps> yeah. You did that shit. Be him at his own game, old man. Worrying about who will or won't get hurt. It's not just the Avatar who has to deal with that. That's what it means to be a family. Aww. Family, all Kuruk, Roku, Kiyoshi, they all said that I need to do this by myself. This is the past. The only one person can tell you the future. You. The person who'll write the legend of Aang. The legend of Aang? Is that a reference to the legend of Korra in the future? <gasps> Ash! Oh, the Fire Nation is here. Fire Nation's here. Whoa, Katara said it so nonchalantly. Oh, the Fire Nation's here. Have a sense of urgency, maybe. I don't know. Alrighty, this is episode... Eight. We're under attack! 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 <laughs> now that's teamwork. I got some things to take care of. Appa, yep, yep. <sighs> okay, Sokka. When you couldn't even bear flying, and now look at him. He is steering Appa. That's growth. Oh wow, <laughs> the way Katara was bouncing around, you could tell that was uh, CGI. Like, that was not a real person. One ship down, how many more to go? <laughs> oh wow, wow. Search the coastline for fishers. Signs of warm water outflows from the sea. They could provide a pathway inside. I'm glad we're so smart. Lu Ten would have been proud to have you as his father. Stop. We'll meet again after I have the avatar. Hmm. Big words, man. Oh, the tear. See, the lighting here isn't bad. Like, it actually matches the environment. Oh, this isn't our work. No, this comes courtesy of our spies in homage. Fucking sigh, bro. Ooh, my designs are meant for war. Shut the fuck up. Ooh, sick. Ooh, this looks cool. Forget your this is about the survival of the waterbenders, and you need all the help you can get. I mean, she's right. Why are you depriving 50% of your population from fighting? They can heal and fight. What good is it relying on the past when it stops us from having a future? Did Katara teach her that? But if the women have never been trained to fight, how do they know how to fight? Uh, see, I'm telling you, I have the mind of a master, master, I have the mind of a mastermind, what's that? Unless they do it in secret, which would make sense. Like, outwardly, they're adhering to the traditions, like, uh, women are not allowed to fight, but practicing in private. That would make sense. Kind of, that'd kind of be badass of them. If anything should happen to me, you must take over. You are the future of the Northern Water Tribe, my daughter. My Amber Mid Thunder's so pretty. I know that was not the point of the scene, but... I just couldn't stop looking at her face, she's so pretty. Make sure the princess stays safe. I swear I won't leave her side. Oh, cute. Take care of her. <laughs> Han, you'll find someone else! Master Paku told us to report to you. We haven't finished our training yet, but try our best. Oh, huh? that was so earnest. Let me know. Yes, Master Katara. <gasps> master Katara? Hell yeah. Okay. One fight with Paku and she's a master. It's the ice moon, the barriers between the physical and spirit worlds grow thin on this night. Oh, that's why he was keeping a secret? Nothing. Just a bunch of mumbo jumbo about lion turtles. <laughs> lion turtles! That's gonna come back. An oasis deep in the ice that provided warmth and nourishment for their people. The tribe looked up to the sky and learned to waterbend by watching the moon push and pull the tides. The origin story of how waterbenders came to be is so interesting. Watching the tides move back and forth because of the moon, and that's how they learned. That's so cool! My knife is near. You're going to kill the ocean and moon spirits? Aang had enough to worry about. Now he has to worry about that. It's like one thing after another. If Aang had hair, he'd go bald. <laughs> okay, Momo? That was so random. Good job, Momo. You actually made yourself useful. <gasps> <gasps> oh my alive. god. Barely. Wait, actually? He was looking pretty dead. Where are we? Oh, yeah. That was cool. That looks cool. So, like, if anyone is on the brink of death, 
can they be brought here? Because if not, it's kind of odd that this little lemur has the privilege of being brought back to life by the spiritual water. Either you help me find the spirits or watch as I burn this whole place to the ground. I don't see why you don't just do that anyways. Like, I thought you were trying to trying to win over the north. Wouldn't that just be the tactic to use? We need to stop Zhao. This isn't about Zhao, this is about us. And you're coming with me now. Wow, Zuko really has tunnel vision. He is not seeing the bigger picture out here. I'll deal with him. Okay, Katara. Go easy. Enough people have been hurt already. I don't care. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> Why would you assume that he was talking to Zuko? <laughs> oh, that looks so sick. You little peasant! You found a master, haven't you? She is her own master now. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, you're looking at her. Ooh, okay, Katara. Push and pull, yin and yang. And they just happen to be circling each other, making it so obvious. How do you know which one is the moon and which one is the ocean spirit? Ooh, the color changed. It will tell stories about me! Zhao, the moon slayer. The moon slayer. I mean, it sounds better than the conqueror for sure. How much of a threat will the avatar be once I eliminate waterbending from the world? Master of three elements. Doesn't quite have the same ring to it. Let's face it. Oh, he is underestimating the avatar. I mean, two more elements to beat you up with. This is still worse than just fighting a regular firebender. Oh my god. Imagine seeing the moon just disappear. <gasps> Those people just died! Wait, their ship can withstand that? Isn't that basically like the Titanic scraping by an iceberg? That's gonna do some damage to your ship. <gasps> oh shit! Damn, they have the same stick as Sokka. They're actually utilizing it like way better than him. Ooh, I like how the flash of color that appears when someone is like near the fire. That's a cool detail. Bean, the Avatar, he's putting your duties above all else, even your life. The Avatar has to- Oh, is he about to go into the Avatar state? Yeah, there he goes, there he goes. It's about to go fucking down. I feel bad for the ocean spirit. His homie just died. Ooh, they kept the little water monster figure. Sick, okay. Yeah, the CGI budget went into this for sure. Why is that Godzilla, basically? Aang has given himself over to the ocean sphere, allowing it to channel its rage through him and access the power of the Avatar. Is Zuko gonna save Katara? Bring the spirit to your life, Uncle. Wait, how did Uncle Iroh know exactly where Zuko was? We must go! No! No! Zuko! We must! We can't! We must! <gasps> so they just left Katara! Damn, I had too much faith in Zuko, but it's okay. I shouldn't have expected him to be like that. Truly unbelievable that they both came out of that unscathed. Zuko, don't! He's a small man who's going to meet a small end. That's a fucking roast. Ozai was just using you as motivation for your sister. You gonna believe that, Zuko? Even though you know that on the inside. Who do you think was my ally who identified the blue spirit sword? Oh. So you were the fire in which her iron was forged. Oh. Ooh, that's a line. Ooh, Zuko was about to kill his ass. Damn. Wait, you're just gonna walk away? Bro, don't turn your back. It's okay, Uncle Iroh will help you. Yeah, I fucking knew it. Saw that shit coming. As if Uncle Iroh was just gonna watch that happen. Oh shit. I actually feel like I'm watching a Godzilla movie right now. Yeah, they really put the CGI budget into this. Oh, uh, this is so great. You know, I was shitting on the earlier CGI, but knowing knowing that this looks great, mm -mm. I take it all back. I take it all back. This is so cool. Ooh, about to make a massive wave. Oh man. Aang is not gonna like that he just killed a bunch of people when he gets out of this. Aang is lost. All that's left is a vengeful spirit who will roam endlessly looking for its partner but will never find it. Oh! There must be something we can do, some way to bring the moon back to life.
Wow. She knew exactly <laughs> that he would try to stop her. You're not just the Avatar, you're my family. This is your world. This is your home. We are your family. Aww. They took out the fact that Katara calmed Aang down from the Avatar state the first time he went into it. But now they're doing it here, which I like. At least they didn't take it out completely, which I thought they did. But is Katang coming back? Ooh, oh my goodness. Ow. That's fucking crazy. Imagine seeing the moon disappear and then come back. Oh my goodness. This is one for the history books. I will say, I mean, I've been saying it, but the soundtrack for the show has been pretty good. They have been really like utilizing it well, especially in these like emotional scenes. Wait, so did Uncle Iroh actually kill off Zhao? Because Aang in that state wiped out Zhao in the anime series. So I'd even comment about how Zhao just like, you know, got blasted off the bridge because I was like, oh, he's gonna come back. I guess they just dealt with him right then and there. I don't mind that Uncle Iroh was the one that finished him off because it did feel like a Iroh and Zuko versus Zhao situation. So Aang taking him out wouldn't have like mattered as much or like seemed as meaningful. <gasps> Is that the kid? <gasps> oh no! Oh man, I suspected that Han was gonna die but I didn't know if they were gonna go through with it. Well, you can't save everyone. She sacrificed herself for all of us. I stood on the sidelines while others fought and died, being the warrior I could never be. In a moment, but she must have been scared. You made sure she wasn't alone. Yeah. You don't have to be a warrior to be a hero. Wow. Yeah, exactly. There's a whole new generation of waterbenders who need training. We could use your help. She's not gonna stay there. She has to help Aang. After all, the Avatar saw us learn waterbending. In that case, he couldn't have asked for a better master. I mean, considering how fast Katara has improved. I gotta say, she is a master. Oh, this green screen is so obvious. Um, my belief is not being suspended. What do you think, Prince Zuko? What do you want to do? I don't know. I'm tired. Then you should rest. A man needs his rest. Uncle Iroh's like, I need some goddamn tea. It seems the Avatar remains alive and free. Pity. Oh, now it's Azula's time. Conquering the North was always an unlikely proposition. Why attack the North at all? Oh, did he want to get rid of Zhao? Distraction. Oh, right. What's next? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, there's more. We have devised a method to better understand celestial motion. Oh, wow. They really are going out of order with things. Oh, wow. Visual demonstration. All righty. So that is the end of the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender, the Netflix live action. We already know that they got renewed for another two seasons, so this is not the last we're gonna see of this show. Um, what are my final thoughts? I actually really like these last two episodes. It might just be because I just like the fight scenes when Aang and the ocean spirit became Godzilla and were fucking demolishing the Fire Nation troops. That was sick. That was so enjoyable to watch. Even the fight scene with Katara and Paku, it looked funny. I was laughing like hell, but I mean, the, the fight itself was cool. I liked Amber Mid Thunder as Yue, but I feel like the romance between her and Sokka were so, it was just so rushed. They were staring at each other. They had like one interaction and then suddenly she's telling him her life story. I guess you can argue that they had two moments in fact, when she was a fox in the spirit world, but that barely counts. They had some chemistry, but I feel like the chemistry between Sokka and Suki was just like way more palpable. Kind of surprised that Zhao got <gasps> off real fast. Maybe he, maybe he's still alive, not gonna lie. Maybe he'll come back in season two. So with Azula, I know I went off about her in my last video. I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to like poke at her insecurities so much that she kind of just snaps and then goes against her father, which in turn gives her more responsibility, which actually that kind of makes sense because when Ozai was fighting Zuko in the Agni Kai, the fact that Zuko was soft and wouldn't give the final blow, Ozai was so 
disappointed than that. He wanted Zuko to go all the way. So he was testing Azula, basically. Will Azula push back against him? And she, eventually she did, which was exactly what Ozai wanted. So I guess that makes sense why they pushed her like that. But still, I'm not a huge fan of like the whole insecurity thing. For me personally, for my own enjoyment, I just would have preferred her to just be like more openly confident and psychotic. Okay, so here are my overall thoughts about the season so far. It's interesting how much they put into the season while also cutting out a lot of stuff. There was a lot of things that happened in book one, not gonna lie. So I really didn't expect them to put everything in the first season anyways. Plus they're not doing it like book one, book two, book three as like the first, second, and third season. So they're not constricted into just like a singular book. Creative liberty and all that. So like, I, like I'm not personally bothered by that. <laughs> I did want to see the fucking pirates. I think that my favorite thing about the live action is the relationship between Uncle Iroh and Zuko. I really loved their uh, moments together. It was always so heartwarming. The actor who plays Uncle Iroh, I've watched Kim's Convenience. Like I, I'm, I'm aware of his game. When his eyes would get glassy talking about Zuko and like being careful and like how he cares about him, you really just feel so sympathetic towards him. That's a good portrayal of Uncle Arrow. Starting from episode one, I was like, Zuko? Eh, I don't know. Like, I like Dallas Liu. Just wasn't feeling it. But as I watched more episodes, he really grew on me. And I think that he did a really good job being Zuko. Like, I'm pleased with him. I would say my biggest criticisms about the show would be the character portrayals, which is funny because I literally just said how Zuko and Uncle Iroh did such a good job. But obviously my complaints were mostly about like Katara, Azula, Ozai and stuff. But I kind of saw it with Katara in these last two episodes. She was assertive. She was putting her foot forward. She's like, you know what? I'm not going to take that. Just because I'm a woman, you're not going to put me in this box where the only thing I can do is heal. Katara is so much more than that. And I'm glad that I was able to see that side of her. I wish we could have seen that side of her consistently throughout the season, but I'm glad they had that bleed through a little. Aang again, it's hit or miss. Sometimes his portrayal of Aang is really good, but then other times it's it falls flat. Also, I understand what they're doing with Ozai too. I have a mixed opinion because it's like, I like that we're seeing more of Ozai. Man, I just kind of wish he was more cruel. I understand that like being cartoonishly cruel wouldn't translate well in a live action. The whole thing about like humanizing villains and like giving them nuance and making them well-rounded. Like I get, I get it. So yeah, if I had to rate the show so far, I would say it falls around like a 6.5. It's a good first watch and it was entertaining enough, but it just wasn't the best adaptation I've ever seen. There was a lot of changes that I didn't agree with and blah, blah, blah. But however, there is a, another aspect that's particularly unique to me. So the reason why I don't do videos about shows and TV series is that it's tiring to edit. I edit my own videos. I don't have an editor. So watching over the same content, it just gets kind of boring after a while. It makes me not want to do work. Like it makes me not want to edit basically. I felt that way with the animated show. Three to four months of straight avatar editing. That burnt me out so bad and that's why I never did Legend of Korra. That's why I just never did a series again. This one wasn't too bad, a month worth of avatar videos, but still it's hard to say if that affected my enjoyment of the show in its entirety because it's like oh man I just finished a video now I have to like record the next one and I have to edit it over the next week so I'm like watching over the footage again and again and again. Even when I re-watched the anime series before watching this, I found that I enjoyed watching the series a lot more when I did it that way. I would say like maybe if I had watched this on my own time, I would give it like maybe like a 7 out of 10. That being said, there are a lot of things that could be improved. It could go up or it could go down. <laughs> It could get worse, but who knows? They got renewed for two more seasons, not even just one, two more seasons. In an era where Netflix series get canceled after one season, if they don't do better, I will be there to shit on them. It makes me wonder when they'll start filming for season two because all these actors are pretty young and they would probably need to like film fast in order to keep the timeline that they're on before they age too fast. Like the actors themselves age too fast, especially with Aang. He's gonna go through puberty and he's not gonna look like Aang anymore. And they're gonna have to like CGI him to look younger. But yeah. 
I can't wait to see Toph. Good luck to the casting team. I hope you guys enjoyed watching After the Last Airbender live action with me. It is a lot better than the M. Night Shyamalan movie. I've seen people be like, oh, this is worse than the movie. And I'm like, oh, you can have your criticisms, but worse than the movie? I don't think so. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you want, and I'll see you for the next video.